Amen. Amen. I do believe we might get some questions today. Um, for you, for, for everybody that's new here, you don't really know what's going on. So I'm going to fill you in really quickly. Um, we're doing a series in relationships. It's probably a, a very, uh, probably the most practical series that I've preached so far. Um, we have done some of the technical side of things. We're now shifting into the practical side of things where we're actually going to now start tonight to talk about dating and marriage. And then next week, we're going to talk about intimacy, uh, sex, and what you can and cannot do, biblically speaking. Uh, we're going to brush on that a little bit tonight. We're going to talk about culture uh, and, and our dating practices. Keep in mind, I am taking this from a purely biblical view, okay? I will let you in on where I'm at a little bit with it because I, you got to understand that some of this has to be flexible in our culture, but not all of it. And so some of it I'm just not willing to be flexible on, and you're going to think I'm a legalistic ass, and I, I don't really care, um, simply because I'm just telling you what the Bible says. It's going to stretch you. Uh, you know what? I just want you to think. That's all I'm hoping that you get out of this, is that you leave here just thinking a little bit, because... In our relationships, we started, our, the very beginning of our series, we started in Genesis 1, which we're going to go back to again today. And we talked about how all of our relationships are linked to our relationship with God. That we were created by God, the Creator, and then creation, and how the two are linked together in a relationship. That we have a Creator, God, that wants to hang out with us, that wants to chill with us, that wants to, to, to be your friend. We sing songs, right? I am a friend of God, and so on and so forth. And, and so then we talked about, what did we talk about the second message? Oh, being fakers. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, where we talked about how basically we're all surface. You know, the surface conversations you have with everybody, and we really never get to the core of really knowing each other, and that we're all kind of faking through life, trying to be people that we're really not. Uh, I can't obviously stick all of us into that box, um, but in one way or another, we'll all like stretch a story, or we'll all do something that we're worried about what people think, and so we tend to alter it. We tend to put that mask on, to put that face on, to kind of change. And I basically called all of us a bunch of fakers. And so that we go through life faking. Uh, we see this in the church, right? Wow, do we see it in the church where you got all these people that think that they earn uh, their salvation somehow because you can't. It's a free gift by God. And, and that they are going to earn their salvation. And then they're upset that they can't uh, appear uh, holy because they think that by doing certain works, they're going to be holy. And so then they put on this mask, the, the Christianese mask, the religiosity mask, where they're, they try to act like they're perfect when really they're not. And they hide behind all that and they won't admit their imperfections and all that kind of stuff. And so that whole message said, yeah, that is fake. Screw all of that. That the, the, the only religion that's acceptable to God, it says in James, is caring for the poor, caring for the widows, caring for the children and the oppressed. That is the only religion that is acceptable to God. So a lot of our religious systems and different things that we have, they're just not biblical. There's nothing wrong with a system of religion in the sense of if it points you to Jesus and it helps you in your relationship with Jesus. So we're all a bunch of fakers. And then last week we talked about friends. And we really, the Bible sets the bar for who your real friends are really high. Really high. And we set that bar uh, that high last week by saying that a friend is someone that's willing to die for you. And that I brought in that imagery of Christ being that friend that was willing to die for you. And that he is your actual only true friend in the sense of he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, he'll never bite you in the butt, he'll never stab you in the back. Our friends here, no matter how good they might be, might. Because we're all sinners. We're all born in sin. We all have that sinful nature in us. And so we're all kind of out for ourselves in one way or another. Which is exactly why we're all a bunch of fakers and why our relationship with Jesus is the whole beginning of what your relationships are going to look like the rest of your life. So, let's get into uh, 
dating. I want to preface it with this. Our culture today has a very, very different view of dating than what the Bible does. The Bible actually doesn't talk about dating at all. It's not in there. So it was a bit of a difficult message to research because yeah, I got this fancy computer program where you can like enter in a subject and it'll search all my, my resources and my books and stuff and pull out the resources that I need in order to start to study uh, that passage or that subject. And I, I typed in dating, it's like zero found. You know, and I'm like, this sucks. This, how am I going to do this? How am I going to preach a message on dating when the Bible really doesn't talk about it? So then I started to explore, why? Like, what, why doesn't the Bible talk specifically about dating? Well, the biggest reason why is the cultural reason of the simple fact that back in Bible times, there was no such thing. There was just no such thing as dating. Um, the, the actual word dating uh, first came to be in the 1800s. And in the 1800s, the context of the word dating meant prostitution. <laughs> That's what dating meant, prostitution. Uh, so we are going to get uh, we are going to get into that a little bit tonight uh, about you know where to where to buy them and stuff like that. So, but first I want to I want to go back to Genesis chapter two. Genesis chapter two says this in verse eighteen. It says, "Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him." And then if you jump down to verse 24, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. We're going to talk about that a little bit today and even more next week. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Genesis 2 shows us that it's not good for man to be alone. This makes perfect sense. If you look in our cultural setting and just who we are in our inner core of who we are, how many people here like to be alone all the time? I know we got our moments where we want to withdraw, you know, if you're introverted, you want to withdraw from a lot of things. But ultimately, if you knew that you were completely alone all the time, you wouldn't do well. Uh, Anybody seen that movie with Tom Hanks where the dude, like, marries a volleyball? (laughs) What's it called? Cast, cast away. Yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good uh, portrayal of what happens if you're totally left alone. If you've got no interaction with human beings whatsoever, you will go nuts. You'll go nuts. We were made to be in relationship, first of all, with God. That's the whole point of creation was for the creation to be in a relationship with the creator. We have to have relationships, but they're a disaster. They're a mess. They're all over the map. And so God says, okay, it's not good for man to be alone, so I'm going to give him a helper. Now, this to me is a beautiful verse because that means he gave me my wife to be my helper. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So let's pray. Um, so now, obviously, that's not exactly what he meant, and we're, we are going to get more into that in the next few weeks of exactly uh, what we mean in the big picture uh, about that. God didn't exactly make my wife to be my slave uh, or anything like that. I'm supposed to love my wife as Christ loves the church. That's what it calls a man to do. So it does say women serve your husbands, but it also says men serve your wives. It's a balance. Okay, it's a, called a healthy relationship. We really don't know what that is in our culture today. So we can see that we're designed to be in a relationship with God, but he takes it that step further. He says that it's a relationship with a girl and that you're to get married. So we're to be in a relationship first with the Creator, with God, then we're supposed to find that hot woman and hook up with her. Everybody's got a different definition of what that is. I'm just saying hot as in period. You think so. Okay? Now, girls, same thing, right? Now, you find a guy. But Paul, he, he kind of confuses that a little bit because he talks, and we're going to talk about that. He talks a little bit about the fact that he's never going to marry, that he's gifted that way, and the fact that he's never 
going to marry. And it really is a gift. It really is a gift because God instilled marriage there for a reason. And that reason, uh, this is just one of the many reasons, but that reason is to deal with our sexual temptation. 